This is going to be to test the rendering capability, the 4K rendering capability of the laptop so far. At this point, just to recap, um, what I've done is I've changed the screen out. I've uh, changed out the processor, which is actually underneath the keyboard here. I've also added a one terabyte um, solid disk drive, a solid state disk drive, pardon me. And really, let me see, I'd already upgraded the memory to 12 gigabytes. I can take it to 16, but really wanted to run this test first prior to spending any more on it. And then I can weigh my options. Uh, anything else that will be down in the description as far as you know what's been changed and what it's currently running. So now what I've done is I've set up a little just quick test to see how it actually does. Uh, see how much further I need to go to get it to the point where I can render to 4K smoothly. And that's one thing that I want to point out. You know, you, you can render 4K on you know a lot of different systems, but the fact is, are you going to be able to do it and have it run smoothly? So that's what I'm going to show you, and then I'll also explain, walk through, and kind of point out what it looks like when it runs smoothly, and then what it doesn't. So I got a couple of different programs open here. I disregard my Word doc there. But right now I'm running the screen recorder, which is actually what's providing this video. It's the CyberLink PowerDirector screen recorder. I'm probably going to put up a review of that little program. It actually came free with PowerDirector, and I think it's pretty awesome. But it allows me to make videos like this. You will also see some more footage that's actually going to come from my uh, my G85, which I'm actually filming from. I'm, I can point to it. It's right here. I may put it up in the corner uh, just to give you a different perspective. So the other thing I'm testing out is my lavalier mic, which I will probably put up a review of that as well. It is one of my audio sources for this video. The other audio source is my trusty. Um, Rode uh, Micro, which I have plugged into the G85, and I think that's about it. So, we've already kind of discussed the program that I have running to record this. That's what it looks like. I'm not really worried about that right now, so I'll minimize it and I will open up my Power Director. So, I've already set this up, and the way that it's set up is I loaded two different clips. One clip is actually shot in 1080p. The other clip is shot in the 4K. So, just so you can see what I'm referring to, so this is from the first clip here, and these are the properties of the video. And if you look here, it basically is H264, A, uh, sorry, AVC. It's only about, well, the video is seeing that it's actually a total of 20 minutes. But I've trimmed this down, you know, for our sake, just so the test doesn't take too long, and I don't really need to see the whole thing. But this file is two gigahertz or two gigabytes, 2.45, and it's MP4 floor format. So this was actually one of the reviews that I did. I just used that same footage since I normally film in 1080p. So my 4K was actually a clip that I shot of my backyard, and it is slightly smaller so only about three minutes but you notice that three minute file ends up being fairly sizable since it's, it's uh, about 1.24 gigabytes and in all actuality 4k in general is about four times the size of the 1080 um, nothing special I shot it at 30 frames per second uh, do the same thing for my 1080p usually sometimes I'll step down to 24 but it's rare I usually keep it at, at 30 and it's the same format. Uh, big difference is one's 4K, one's not. So what I decided to do was to do a, a, a test here. I'm not worried about the audio right now. And as a matter of fact, I'm plugged into the laptop. And the way this uh, Realtek card is set up, if you're actually going through the audio jack, which is actually right over here, you can't have sound broadcasting through the speakers. So it's almost like the sound that's coming out of the the, the jack is going through a headset. So for this case, this video will not have any sound coming from the laptop. There is definitely a way I could work around that, but no big deal. I just wanted to show you what it actually looked like. So the screen that you're gonna be looking at is this screen here. And what I'm probably gonna do is undock it. And then once I undock it, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger so you can kinda see 
what I'm actually talking about and then make it about like that big. All right, so what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna take this timeline, I'm gonna slide it back to the 12K footage, or not 12K, my goodness, the 1080p. So as you can see, if you watch this clip, 1080p should render fairly smoothly. So you'll notice I'm going through, um, you know, getting ready to work on the laptop. There is no lag, no hesitation. It appears to be fairly smooth. Uh, hopefully I'll come back in the frame. There you go. And you can see that it's moving. So what you need to watch is down here. When it transitions over to this 4K clip, I would like for this to happen smoothly and that means my job is done and you'll still see the same sort of speed. It shouldn't slow down or be jerky or anything weird. But with that being said, that's why we're doing this test. So once it gets to my, uh, my outside, we shall see. Uh, we don't have much longer here, so I would say let's just watch. And there you go. So if you can't tell, you will notice that, yeah, that's what a computer looks like whenever it is struggling to render 4K. And by the way, I haven't even gotten into processing it. Um, there are a lot of other things that I could do with the software. I'd say a lot, but there's like one thing I could think of that might make this a little more uh, acceptable. It may not necessarily sort it, but I really don't want to do that. You know, my goal really was to try to get the hardware uh, where I wanted it so I could just process without using any tricks of any of the editors. So, I mean, this thing is terrible. <laughs> um, let's try this. We'll try to jump forward just to see. Uh, a little better, but not so much. Once again, it is a massive file, and it's a massive amount of data that's actually trying to be rendered right now. Uh, and yeah, the, the hardware is having a hard time keeping up with it. So, what do we do from this point? Let me minimize this, and I'm going to probably just uh, dock it back in the window. We'll stop it. And there's that. So, just to kind of rehatch, this is what it would look like if the 4K was able to be handled by this current configuration. Um, because I didn't really do 4K prior to starting this, I'm assuming that it probably would have been worse uh, if I would have tried it on the original configuration, but it's still pretty terrible. Uh, so I have a couple of options here, and since I'm still dealing with the software, there is one thing that I will mention. So let's say you're already at this point and you're like, I don't want to spend any more money. So you've already got your, your, your whatever movie editor of choice that it is that you use, your video editor. What you could do is certain ones, like for instance, PowerDirector, they have a really neat trick for the most part where they create what's called shadow files. And it basically takes that 4K footage and it creates a temporary file that's way smaller. And you do all your editing with those files. And then on the back end, once you're finished, it'll process and basically save everything in that 4K format. It's just a smarter way to utilize your resources and it allows you to edit 4K on your uh, older systems. I don't wanna do that because once again, I wanna be able to render 4K without having to resort to any tricks. So let me minimize this. Um, going back to... Uh, here. So this would be my other option. Right now, I'm going to jump over to this tab. This is what I'm currently running inside of this system. It came with four gigabytes of DDR3. And when it when I got it back in 2014, I went ahead and ordered one of these chips. Uh, I put it in eight gigs. So we're up to 16 gigs right now. And it's only running at the uh, 1600 uh, megahertz. Uh, unbuffered. So if you jump down to basically the fastest that this memory can run is your 1600 megahertz. Uh, let's go over here real quick. So what I could do is I could disassemble the keyboard again, basically like I'm changing the processor because unfortunately, whenever they set this darn thing up from the factory, 
the memory slot that's actually underneath the laptop that's really really easy to access like right there there's the panel um, that's the one that was empty which I guess that works because if you want to upgrade it four screws pop in one of these and you're good the other one that gets installed from the factory is in the harder location so it's located underneath is basically disassemble this again which is not a big deal I've already done it and get to that four gigabyte stick take it out and then replace it with this thing right so then that way I'll have the uh, 8 gigabytes that I actually install on the other side running with one of these bad boys now I could go a little cheaper if I wanted to and just pick up another 1600 megahertz stick um, or even I can just pick up this exact same one that I got if I didn't want to spend the extra 16 bucks to buy this one but I'm wondering if I'm going to go through the hassle of doing it, uh, might as well, you know, just pay a little bit extra and get the 2133 megahertz. And what ends up happening is uh, the way that they designed the Kingston uh, technology, or I should say the HyperX, was it, it basically runs at a certain speed and then it overclocks on its own. So it has the capability to do that when it's needed for the most part. So it will only go up to your 2133. Uh, once again, if I'm going to be in there anyway, the price difference between this guy and then if I went with the, the cheapest option would be 30 bucks. But even still, you know, I'm either spending 60, 90, or like I said, I could do the 76 here, but I just don't really see a reason why I would buy this one. I would just go ahead and spurge, or I said splurge, but buy this one. So I don't know, just some things I need to kick around just to see if it's even going to be worth me pursuing it. Uh, cool thing about it is right now I can actually play some older games on this laptop. And it's not laggy uh, by any measure. And in the event that I can't ever get to the point where I can render without using like shadow files in PowerDirector, I do have a laptop where I can do other stuff on. So I think that's pretty cool. So I think that's about it. Um, next thing I'm probably going to review if I decide to order this, at least for this particular project, is of course throwing the memory in. I may do a short video time lapse or something where I'll speed up my uh, installation just so you can kind of see how it actually works. Unless you know somebody wants me to actually show the steps, I'm fine either way. Uh, and then I'm also going to spend some time reviewing some software since I have this handy dandy screen recorder I'm actually going to review this program in general because there is a, a back end here where you can actually alter certain settings um, and then I'm also going to review my new lavalier mic which I'm using right now as well as the software I showed you earlier which was the PowerDirector suite so I've been pretty happy with this so far and there's a couple of reasons why I chose this other over other editors so that's it for now and see you the next go around